Hi, this is Louise Beauty from getupandgoguru.com and this is my 30-day self-love affair challenge. Today is day 18 and this video is going to be a bit different to the previous ones that I've shot. The previous ones have just been short ones that I've shot uh, about the different uh, things I've been noticing about how hard it is to, to love myself. Uh, and uh, so this is going to be just, this is going to be a bit different because I just want I wanted to talk to you about something that I've never spoken about other than writing about it on my blog and it's something that challenges me every day and something that makes it, I guess, it's one of those things that makes it hard to love yourself. Uh, and has done ha, has definitely been the case in the in the past. I have a condition uh, that is is known uh, in in some circles that I've discovered since uh, since been uh, since developing the condition. Um, I have found that this has be, this is known as electrosensitivity or electrohypersensitivity. At the time, twelve years ago, when I developed it severely during pregnancy, uh, I didn't know what. It was called. I didn't know there was such a thing. Uh, all I knew was that I started to get severe migraine-like headaches, uh, earache, face pain from everything electromagnetic, almost TVs, computers, video cameras, even uh, the phone, any type of phone, but particularly mobile phones. Uh, I couldn't even be in the house. With the computer or the television on, uh, I have a fairly small 14 square house, but I couldn't be at any point in that um, that house. Someone's obviously uh, getting excited out there to that one. Um, so it's 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 such a hard one for me to to discuss in many ways because in a lot of ways I have moved past the trauma that that. It was uh, when it first came into my life and really just tore my life apart. Uh, it was really almost literally one day I could use my old laptop to do my PhD and the next day it was giving me the headaches. And this had been a pro problem leading up to pregnancy. Uh, so it, it had been a, a certain I'd had a certain level of pain with normal uh, a PC or a, um, a newer laptop, but I was able to get around it with an older laptop and just avoid using the mobile phone too much. And I guess pregnancy, as I've learnt now, I've got certain conditions that mean that the, that my little baby, who's now 11, uh, was was taking the nutrients out of me that I desperately needed to protect my body and, uh, and suddenly it couldn't anymore. Uh, it, electrosensitivity is, is something that most people have never heard of, most people don't, wouldn't even believe exists, and especially to the extent that I have it. Um, within seconds of turning the television on, within seconds of, of being in front of the computer or anywhere near the computer, I have a severe migraine, like needles in my face, uh, my neck. Uh, Certain mobile phones affect me more, even just texting. It's a really hard one to explain. Uh, and I dare say some people, if they watch this, will um, dismiss it and think that I'm just, I don't know, some other, some, some nutbag uh, who's saying that uh, she's got this thing and you know, she's just imagining it. But uh, I think if you, if anyone reads my blog, uh, getupandgoguru.com, They'll see. I, I'm I'm a pretty normal person, and uh, I'm a pretty logical person who um, has got to a point with this illness where I I made a, a conscious choice that it was not going to stop me living my life anymore. I I spent three years trying to avoid all the electromagnetic radiation that I could. You know, I couldn't have the heater on during pregnancy, so after 
we thought it might go away after the, the baby was born, my little darling Sophie, um, but it, it didn't go away. So, so we installed a wood heater and we, but we went through a winter in Ballarat without any heating because of the pain that it caused me and uh, I couldn't take any medication while I was pregnant. And even now I don't take any medication for the pain because it doesn't make any difference. I take something to help me sleep because sleep is the only thing that really helps. Uh, sleep and hot baths, uh, that's, that's about it. Uh, massages can help a little but, but not really much. Uh, I describe the headaches as migraine-like. I have been told by someone who did their masters in migraine that I can legitimately call them migraines because they uh, definitely fit the description of a migraine. Uh, but no one would ever know that I'm sitting here right now in incredible pain. Uh, it's the end of the day. By the end of the day, I have exposed myself to numerous sources of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, and of course, a lot of people would be sitting there thinking, well, why, why, why do you do that? Like, why, why would, wouldn't you just avoid them? Well, um, I'd challenge anyone in this day and age to avoid electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic radiation, uh, and live any sort of normal life. And particularly as a parent, it's, it's really, it, it's impossible. Uh, the life I was living prior to making my conscious choice to start using computers and TV and, and videos and, and other things again. Um, prior to that, my life was miserable, miserable. And I was still, I was still using, I was still getting the headaches anyway, no matter how much I tried to avoid it. Because, uh, I mean, when you've got a child, you need to answer the phone or you need to make phone calls. Uh, even a cord phone affects me, so uh, go figure. And the car affects me. It's, yeah, it's one of those things where I really thought, uh, on some level, I thought this can't be happening. Maybe I am imagining it. Yeah, I knew I wasn't. But, you know, when such a bizarre thing happens and starts to happen to you and you've just, like, got no reference point for it and no one else seems to have a reference point for it, you definitely start to question your own sanity when it's starting to happen. But I, I knew that it was real uh, right from the start. It's just that... Uh, I guess it seems so unreal and so alien that you, you start questioning. Anyway, so while I was living that type of life, I still had to go to doctor's appointments. I still had to go to uh, any, anywhere where I had to take my daughter. And often they have televisions in the waiting room these days. It seemed like it was almost a conspiracy because it was when it, they started to even bring uh, televisions into restaurants and pubs. They'd have to put them on the wall as if they were a painting. And, and to me it was like, you know, like <laughs> the world had suddenly decided to reject me and, um, you know, sorry, you don't belong in this world anymore and we're going to really make it obvious, you know, so you can't even go um, for a meal in a restaurant without us sticking a, a pain-inducing object into the area that you're going to be in. <laughs> so, you know, in a way, like, nowhere was safe and I, st I really was living in this state of fear and if I, if I was going over to visit a friend, it had to be a friend who, who really understood and was, well, uh, understood as much as they could, but was understanding and they, they knew that they needed to turn their television off and their computer off and air conditioner and heat or whatever um, when I was coming over. And, and sometimes they'd forget and, and then I'd have that awkward time where I'd, I'd have to sit thinking, well, I just put up with the headache and then I think, no, I can't, I really, as soon as I get the headache, like, it doesn't go away unless I sleep, unless I have a bath or something. And so uh, I had this dilemma of like, do I be the nuisance, the pain in the backside, who's, who's always the one, uh, the killjoy, saying, could you turn the television off? You know, even though your daughter's watching the television, could you turn it off now? Uh, and my family, uh, when I went to visit my family or they came here, they, they were so understanding and so wonderful about it, but it was still, it's such an alien thing, such a bizarre thing, that even though they, they knew that 
in theory that I got the headaches, they just sometimes forget because they couldn't feel the pain and so the TV would be on um, or they think that you know I was in the next room so they could sneak the television on but it, it didn't work like that. I had to be absolutely at the furthest end of the house, um, at the bigger house than us, for it to be to make any difference. And even even now, um, because I do choose to to live um, and use all the different objects, objects devices, uh, people tend to just think that well, seeing she uses them, you know, we can have them on all the time. But that's not how I live. I I spend a great deal of my time without any devices on. And then I choose the times when I'm going to have the computer and I'm going to work and I'm going to, or I'm going to watch one of my favourite television shows or a movie or something uh, or I'm going to get on the phone. Uh, so that choice it came back to, you know, I'd, um, I'd done some personal development work, um, particularly at um, a place called Landmark Education and, uh, and I really got some great tools from that. And it was just something that I realised was that I was always saying I can't watch the TV anymore and I can't can't use a mobile phone, I can't use the computer and, and you know, I certainly I went through a period um, after Sophie was born um, where I was um, extremely depressed and I got to a point where I contemplated suicide. Um, where I really saw in my mind that everyone would be better off without me. And I totally convinced myself of that. And um, luckily I'd studied psychology and suicide intervention training and all the stuff, all the, the lifeline, the uh, counselling I'd done, everything together. There was enough of a little voice in my head to say uh, that this, this isn't, this isn't right, you've you got to do something about this, you got to tell someone, and I mean I, I told my husband immediately, ex-husband now, but I told him immediately and we cried a lot, and because neither of us knew what to do, you know, it was a very helpless time. And, uh, and so I made a conscious choice at that sort of three year mark to, to change my language for a start. And to say, I can watch the television, there's just a consequence. The consequence is I get a severe migraine like headache. I can use a computer, there's just a consequence of pain. I can use the phone, there's a consequence of pain. And, and starting to just get it more as a, and I can, I can do it, it's just got consequences. Just like if you're intolerant to dairy and you eat dairy, you know, you, you'll feel bloated and, and mucusy. Yeah. I'm intolerant to that too, uh, but sometimes you choose to have an ice cream, and so that's what I do. And so this was kind of like that, except in a much more severe way. Uh, I even at that point um, got game enough to go and have an MRI, uh, which is like the ultimate. Uh, you can't really get much more e electromagnetic radiation than they pump into you when they give you an MRI. So um, I knew that that would be extremely painful, so of course I'd, I'd not gone and had it. Uh, I frankly wasn't sure I wanted to know whether I uh, had a tumour or not. Uh, I didn't believe I did. I would because I thought I wouldn't be around anymore if I did. Uh, I had a, I'd had a previous scan five years ago for a pre five years prior to, to that and uh, I took that in and um, so they had something to compare it with. And, uh, Look, honestly, I didn't go back for the results. I just, the time got by, I, I didn't make another appointment and uh, I figured that if there was something serious, they would call me and it's probably not the best thing to do and I do not recommend that, but that's uh, what I did. And I have contemplated in one of my blog posts, you know, would I, would I change what I'm doing now? Would I change the fact that I now am pursuing online business as a way of creating an income for myself and eventually financial independence. That is, that's a huge choice that I've made, uh, but it's one that I'm passionate about. It's, it's one that lights me up, the thought that I could help other people 
uh, and I, I can help other people in so many ways by the things that I've been through with chronic fatigue syndrome for 20 odd years and with this electrosensitivity and that's what I want to do and I can see the, the amazing opportunities for doing that through the internet and, uh, and also entrepreneurship, it, it just excites me. Uh, so I am choosing to pursue that avenue um, because I really do see that it, it's really my only chance to be financially free and be able to work the hours that I can work around the health issues that I have and being a single mum and all that sort of thing. It's really my the only thing I see as a potential way for me to be financially free, a millionaire um, plus planning to be um, and then I can be a philanthropist and uh, and really make a difference so I want to make a difference to as many people as possible and and that's one of the reasons I made the decision tonight to shoot this obviously it's not scripted um, it's pretty clear and uh, the lighting's pretty average too but I I just wanted to speak about electrosensitivity or electro hypersensitivity there are a lot of people out there with this condition and most of them go unheard. You don't see much of it on the internet and I must admit I don't seek it out either. I don't seek the forums out and that sort of thing because people who have mild levels, levels of it do interact in forums. Um, I have found a couple but I find that the way I live now is not... I don't choose to see myself as a victim and I don't want to I want to surround myself with people who lift me up and a lot of these people who are on the forums are going through really tough stuff like I was and and they're at a different emotional point to me and and so far a couple of times that I've gone in there I just haven't been ready I think I haven't been ready and strong enough myself to deal with what emotions it brings up for me and so um, I don't go there just at the moment but there is I believe a growing amount of electrosensitivity with all the gadgets that we use now the things that cause me the most pain are smartphones and I've actually had uh, one type of smartphone for three years and uh, have recently found that the other two types of smartphone main types don't give me quite as much headache as um, as the previous one did uh, and that just means that I get a little bit less headache when I text a little bit less pain in my neck but it's still quite severe um, and things like iPads and those sort of things are almost out of the question for me uh, I, laptops I, can, I use and computers, it's just it's just different pain, um, it's so hard to explain this. I guess I just wanted to give it a go, uh, give it a go to explain to you that there are people like me out there, there's very few like me who are on the internet for obvious reasons. There's many people who are affected by Wi-Fi. There are many people affected by all sorts of electromagnetic radiation uh, and especially if they live in apartment blocks and that sort of thing. Uh, it can be a very emotive topic and I've chosen at this point to steer away from the political side of it um, except I did campaign a little bit to um, not have a mobile phone tower built uh, 300 metres away from my parents' house in a little tiny town in, in Australia here. Unfortunately, it made no difference and they built it anyway, so it's like smack bang in the middle of a town of 70 people. Uh, people might say this is all, you know, there's conspiracy theories about this stuff. But all I'm saying is my experience. My experience is I get severe migraines, severe face pain, neck, ear pain, 
from particularly mobile phones, computers, normal phones, televisions and a range of other things. And it is real. It's as real a, as... Well, it's, it's real. And if you ever come across anyone who says that they have a problem with electro electricity or electromagnetic radiation, don't think that they're a bit nutty. Don't don't dismiss them because it's it's a real condition and I believe it's a real 21st century condition and it may get worse. It's it's not something to I guess run around screaming and shouting and you know, about um, in fear, but it's something to be aware of and. I'd like to start being a voice for people with electrosensitivity and support them in whatever way I can. And the reason that I decided to put this up as one of my self-love affair videos is because I still struggle on a daily basis with the, the idea that I'm faulty in a way like seriously have you heard of this thing have you heard of anything like this someone who can keep smiling like this and be in extreme pain um, and that they, they could turn the TV on and be getting an even worse headache than they've already got like just what I'm saying to you must sound so bizarre. So, uh, it just feels like I'm, I often feel like I'm an alien in this world and that I don't belong here and that, that I've, I'm just like a faulty, faulty um, human being. And it's just not the case. I know that uh, but when you've got something that's so bizarre that, that there really isn't even a medical term for it that if you go to a doctor most doctors would actually say they'd never heard of it if you ask anyone down the street if they'd heard of it they, they'd shake their head or they'd think you're crazy like having a condition like that I mean chronic fatigue syndrome myalgic encephalomyelitis whatever you want to call it um, it has been confronting enough to deal with over 22 years because um, it's often dismissed as uh, a you know, all these ridiculous dismissive sort of names for an incredibly serious condition and so now on top of it you know here's this crazy girl who says that she gets headaches from the TV and the computer oh my god you know she must be nuts uh, I'm absolutely positive that that's been said about me <laughs> I'm absolutely positive that's been definitely thought about me uh, and also because I can put a smile on this face no matter how much pain I'm in people really find that um, that it, it's it's incongruent it's incongruent with what they're seeing you know they're seeing this smiley happy person who can chat away and be happy and laugh and you know be the life of the party and yet in the next breath I tell them I tell them about this and then they say oh like have you got a headache now I say yeah yeah I've got a headache now and they go oh what but you're, you're so happy and bright and it, it's just it's just impossible to get across that it is possible <laughs> it's impossible to get across that it is possible and so what I'm babbling on about tonight <coughs> excuse me what I'm babbling on about and why I, I started this video in the first place was because I wanted to acknowledge people with electrosensitivity electro hypersensitivity or whatever they're calling it 
um, they seem to be the two major names and I want to say that it's real, I have it, I live with it daily, I might not look like I do but I really do. Um, but the other thing is about loving yourself exactly as you are, exactly as you're not. I've already spoken in this series about loving yourself when you're ill and how that can be challenging. Loving yourself when you've got a bizarre, unexplainable, beyond rare illness. It's, well, it takes something. And I do it every day. And most days I have a meltdown at some point because what I'm trying to do with the business, with the blog, with everything I aim to do to help Spoonies, people with chronic illness, and people with CFS, ME, electrosensitivity, what I aim to do from a business point of view, uh, it, it takes a lot. And also to uh, bring up my daughter largely on my own. I mean, her dad's still very much in her life, but um, I have her the majority of the time. Plus, run a household and a garden and, um, all of, and also manage my health. Uh, it's a really, really big challenge and uh, I do have frequent meltdowns. <laughs> no one would ever know that unless they're close to me. Um, but I don't, I guess it's not what I like to focus on. So I don't show it, you know, you're not going to see me setting up a video camera to cry into it. <laughs> it's just not what, what people do and it's not what I'm going to do. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe a little one day. Just stay tuned, I guess. But I just want to say, if you're someone who has a rare, unexplainable illness condition like electrosensitivity or electrohypersensitivity, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not a freak. You're worthy of love. And the first thing you've got to do, and this is the hardest one, is forgive yourself. Is forgive your body. Forgive your body for not operating like you think it should and like the rest of the world thinks it should unlike other people's bodies do. Forgiveness to me is very similar to grief. It has many, many layers. I believe forgiveness is something that you do over and over and over again. It's not something that's just done in an instant and it's done over and done with. You know, sometimes you can magically do that and really let something go completely. But in my experience, you know, things will come up to trigger it. And for the most part, I've forgiven my body for not being perfect. <laughs> I've forgiven my body for being unusual, bizarre, freaky, all the words that I can think of that I use on a regular flippant basis to describe myself. For the most part, I've forgiven myself and I've forgiven the universe, universal energy, some people call that God. For the most part, I've let that go and forgiven them. It, whatever. But 
And sometimes, sometimes I hate it. Sometimes I hate me. Sometimes I hate my body. And I think that's just normal. I think that's just natural emotions working their way in and out. And I'm inspired by Nita Morjani, and this is what inspired me to start this love affair with myself in her book, Dying to Be Me. She suggests that we all need to cultivate a love affair with ourselves. And so that's what I've been doing. Or I made a 30-day challenge to see what would come up. And as it turns out, on the 18th day, this is what's come up. I've decided to make this big long video about electrosensitivity. I'd like to do more and I don't know how to do more. If people have electrosensitivity, electrohypersensitivity, please contact me. Let me know how I can help you. I, I'm not going to be someone who advocates in a political way. But from an emotional support way, an empowerment way, that's where I sit, you know. Let's live our lives regardless. Let's grab onto this life and leave nothing, no, just die empty. <laughs> that's, that's one of my other phrases I love is that. You know, we want to leave this life having lived it fully, seized the day and died empty. I want you to live your dreams. I want you to continue to follow your passions and purpose. You may not choose like I do to inflict, <laughs> inflict pain on yourself every day in order to do that. That's a choice I make every day. It's not a choice that comes easily. But it's a choice that I've decided to make because it allows me to feel as fulfilled as I've ever felt in my life. And it gives me a sense of purpose. And if it means that somehow something's happening to my brain that may deteriorate it quicker, I don't know. I truly don't know. Um, but if that means that, at least I know that I have just gone in there and I have played full out in this life for the time that I had. And that's what matters. So if you see this somehow, if you've got electrosensitivity, it's going to be hard. But if someone you love sees this, records it and plays it to you or something on, on their like when I've got a phone on, on lock, I'm okay, um, so I can listen to podcasts and stuff. So maybe you're like that. Um, if someone, if you get this message, know that you can still live your life. You can still choose to live and make a difference in this world in whatever way you want to do that. It's still possible. Don't let this stop you. I'm here to support you in any way I can. And as I say those words, I am brought back to the self-love affair. And I think it would be probably a good idea if I replay this to myself over and over. <laughs> At the times when I'm just saying, I can't keep doing this. Oh my God, I don't want to give up. Um, they're words that I heard in my mind regularly. Um, I can't do this anymore. I want to give up. It's, uh, I'm not all positive. I'm not all cheery cheery. Uh, I go through my tough moments. Um, but ultimately the cause for me is stronger than the pain. And, and that's where I'll finish. Go out. Love yourself, however you are. Whether you've got some bizarre illness, whether you've got, I don't know, a physical deformation, a circumstances that no one would believe in a million years were true. 
but they are. Somehow find a way to build the love for yourself, nurture yourself, and be the most incredible person you can be so that, that you can then go on to inspire other people to be the best that they can be. That's my mission. Louise Bibby, signing off for today. Getupandgoguru.com is where you'll find me. If you want to read some more uh, about my electrosensitivity journey, there are um, five or six in a series about my pregnancy. They're not fun reading. They're not a laugh, I must say. But it'll give you more, more of, an, uh, a st of the story. There's also one, there's also a couple of others on electrosensitivity and uh, you can just search those in the, the search bar and they should come up um, because they're tagged. So go out, live your life, love yourself and I'll talk to you tomorrow or whenever I video the next one. This has been a long one, maybe this could be like three days worth. <laughs> anyway, cheers guys, keep smiling. Bye for now.